Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics, and today's video is about the process I went through to make custom molded wheels using polyurethane rubber. On Bloodsport, we used the exact same type of rubber that I'll be experimenting with, and the casting process that we used is very similar to what I'll show here. The main difference is that Bloodsport uses machined aluminum hubs which are quite expensive, and those wheels are much bigger than what I'll be making. Here, I'll be showing how I cast rubber wheels onto lightweight 3D printed hubs that you could make yourself for a couple dollars a piece, and using reusable custom 3D printed molds in PLA to make a wheel of exactly the size and hardness that you'd like. First off, why use rubber wheels in the first place? Rubber comes in several types and flavors, each with advantages and disadvantages. In general, as a wheel becomes harder and more durable and less likely to tear apart, it also becomes less grippy and provides worse traction. Because of this trade-off, it can be advantageous to try out or even mix and match wheels using different hardnesses. Rubber hardness is measured on the shore hardness scale, and is referred to as the rubber's durometer. The shore scale is really a few different lettered scales, with values like 40A, 60A, 50D, and so on. Urethane is rubber which is available in a range of different hardnesses and durability levels. A hard rubber wheel like those on a shopping cart would be in the 50D range, while skateboard wheels which are much softer might be closer to 80A or 90A durometer. However, skateboards are meant to distribute the weight of a person onto just four small contact patches, well over 40 pounds per wheel. With the weight of a small robot on wheels, that would be way too hard to produce any good grip, as the rubber wouldn't swish down onto the floor at all. Even for a 250 pound robot like Bloodsport, with the wheels we use being so much wider than skateboard wheels, to get as much grip as possible we actually used Shore 30A wheels on the front and Shore 50A wheels on the back in our fights against Endgame and Scorpios. The softer 30A wheels at the front provide more grip, but since they're softer and less durable, they also wear down a lot faster and need to be replaced more often. The 50A wheels at the back are a more durable and harder rubber, so they could take hits much better in case that happens. For smaller insect weight robots, wheel wear is less of an issue as there will be a lot less weight on the wheels, so I wanted to use a softer rubber. Still, 30A seemed a bit soft for my liking, so I chose 40A, a decent middle ground. The exact rubber compound I'm using is Smooth-On's Vitaflex. It's sold in a kit containing hardener and resin in equal amounts, which have conveniently the same density and are mixed one-to-one -one by weight or volume to form a pourable liquid. If coloring is desired, a dye can then be added, careful to keep this under a certain weight percentage or it can interfere with the curing process. This liquid is then poured into a mold which has been coated with some kind of mold release. After that, you simply wait. Other kinds of two-part systems like this require degassing in a vacuum chamber or they could release fumes that are harmful and it would have to be done outdoors, but Vitaflex thankfully requires none of that. It's quick and painless, it can be done safely at home, the worst part about it, honestly, is just the mess that you can make if you spill it anywhere. I've included links to the, in the description for all of the stuff I used in this video. Note, some are Amazon affiliate links which provide me a small kickback if you were to buy something with them at no extra cost to yourself. I plan to make at least a two-part video series about this process. Today in part one, I'll show you my three attempts at molding wheels dyed various colors for my 12-pound robot Draconid and my 3-pound robot Division. I'll talk about what went well, what could have been better, and how I ultimately arrived at success. In part two, I'll make some performance comparisons between the old wheels I was using and these new ones, and provide a walkthrough of how to design the mold and the wheel hubs in CAD to fit any wheel diameter, width, and any sort of wheel mounting. Today, the wheel hubs I'm using have an integrated belt pulley that will have bearings pressed into them and ride on a stationary shaft in my 12-pound robot Draconid. Though the ones that I have for division are meant to be coupled directly to a 6mm D drive shaft. All that aside, let's get going. This is going to be a long one. Alright, so I'm about to try and start doing some molding for new wheels for Draconid. So I have here some 3D printed carbon fiber nylon hubs. This is pretty overkill, these are way heavier than they need to be, but they should certainly survive if the uh, tire holds on at least. Um, so these were printed pretty much solid, and then I have the uh, belt groove here, and the tire will expand to be about three inches diameter, so about yay wide past there. This is the full size that the wheel will be when it's done being molded. So these just sit in here, basically, and it's uh, a little loose intentionally, but maybe I should have made it a bit tighter than it is to uh, try and keep it more centered, but I think it should be fine. I have about a two degree draft angle on the outside lip of the mold 
to make it so that I can demold by pulling this up without it sticking to the sides. I'm a little afraid that the uh, 3D printed lines are kind of going to grab it. So hopefully that'll help combat that. You can also see there's like faces on here because uh, it's faceted since I didn't choose a high enough resolution when I exported these as an SDL, unfortunately. So the wheels won't be perfect circles. They'll be like 50 sided polygons, but that should not matter in practice once they're actually squished to the floor with the weight of a robot on top. I have these holes at the bottom of the mold. I've covered it with packing tape right now um, so that nothing leaks through there, but those are just to make it so that I can push from the bottom to demold the wheels more easily at the end. So I'm going to try and make these wheels out of Vitaflex, a 40A, Shore 40A uh, durometer urethane rubber. Um, you can see it comes in a two-part kit. Um, so it's, I believe, two pounds of total resin and hardener which is enough to make two pounds of rubber. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio that these have to be mixed in and it can be dyed, which I might not try on the first batch because I bought some dyes I'm not 100% certain will work, but I'll probably try that for the second one. Um, I also have a couple different things that I got to try and make it easier to release the wheels from the molds when they're done being molded. So first up, SmoothOn's very own universal mold release. Uh, this stuff's specifically made for this exact purpose, basically, and one would think it would work pretty well for this. Um, however, I also, because this stuff is kind of expensive, it's like $22 just for the mold release, which is half as much as I paid for this uh, resin and hardener by themselves. Um, I also got a cheap $3 thing of Vaseline. I'm pretty sure this is the most expensive Vaseline, honestly, you get on Amazon. Way cheaper for a much larger container than this, but it was just what I found at the... Uh, grocery store at the time. So normal petroleum jelly should be perfectly adequate, I hope, to also act as a mold release for way less money. So the way I designed this mold, you can see there's like an extra lip up top. Uh, the tire will only come up to this lip here. So this extra is just in case I pour too much resin. And then I added this channel in here, this little groove. That's just to help take up some spillover if there is any. So my goal is to fill it up, not to this line, but just barely to this line. If it spills over a little bit into that little trough, that's okay. And I can just peel that away separately because there's the sharp edge here, which will make it really easy to just peel the rubber off afterwards. Um, so the wheel itself, um, this uh, plane where the uh, rubber belt um, groove ends is pretty much aligned with uh, this groove here so that the level of the tire doesn't envelop where the actual belt needs to go to drive it. And I can probably just use a knife or a razor blade to cut off any excess if it does fill too high and get above that line. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna keep pouring it in because I haven't figured out exactly how much weight of urethane I need for each of these. I'm probably just gonna mix up enough. I'll look in CAD and get a general estimate, but I don't know if the density is perfect. So I'll mix up enough that it should fill two molds and plus a little extra, and then pour enough into one of these to make one tire, and then try and dye the rest, and then pour enough into that one to make the second one. All right, first up, I'm gonna try spraying this one with the uh, actual universal mold release. Didn't film spraying this on because as soon as I tried, it sprayed like literally everywhere, and it's pretty gonna get, get, get on the lens, but uh, you see this is all nice and shiny, very, very shiny. This is the one that's not covered yet. It's way more dull. So you get a better idea there. Alrighty. So this one's gonna be V for Vaseline. This stuff obviously won't go everywhere. So I'm just gonna pretty much just goop it on, I guess. Try and get it in all the edges. especially down to those corners, which I feel like will be hard to reach. Probably gonna have to go over this with a paper towel when I'm done to make sure it's like nice and evenly coated. Sorry, I have the tripod like really low to the table now. It's probably a terrible angle. So that's the edge coated. Now I just have to get the inside face. I'm really not using much of this stuff at all. It shouldn't get anywhere 
on this inside like circle anyway, because the uh, hub should cover that surface pretty much, but I'm sure it's gonna seep under somehow. One of the things I realized was maybe a mistake with uh, doing this this way is that I didn't design my molds to have a lid and that wouldn't in theory be a problem. The way that we did this with Bloodsport, we used pretty much the same process with a 3D printed resin printed mold, but that mold was even simpler than this. It literally was just a cup, basically a cylinder. And uh, the resin print is really smooth on the walls, so it didn't even need any sort of draft. As far as I know, it just kind of slid right out, but I figured with FDM, it's best to be safe rather than sorry, because I don't want to have to break my mold with a hammer. Um, but I added these holes to make it so I can push out from the bottom and then also draft angle to make sure that it should slide out more easily Despite the uh, layer lines grabbing onto the rubber better and then the hub should cover this whole central area Without there being any rubber there ideally Like everywhere within the area where this triangles cut out of this There shouldn't be any rubber. It should only exist from like this point outwards, but I'm sure some will seep under here. And the, the other concern is that I realized the density of the rubber I'm using is actually very similar to the density of the 3D print. And uh, when we did this with Bloodsport, we used aluminum hubs, which are much heavier, so they would sink in the resin. But there's a chance that this stuff will actually make the hub float, in which case I will need to like weight down the uh, hub to make it actually sink to the bottom and stay surrounded by the Vitaflex. So that'll be interesting. I'm just gonna try and coat these little triangles to be a little extra safe there. This is definitely not gonna leave as smooth of a, or maybe it leave a smooth surface, but it's not gonna leave as uh, similar of a surface to the 3D print as the uh, super thin spray will, but my hope is that that'll help me out by filling those gaps from the layer lines and making it even easier to demold. So I guess we'll find out. If this first ever set of cast wheels is usable at all, I'll be pretty impressed, frankly. So I bought this set of epoxy dies. Um, I don't know if these are gonna interfere with the curing or not. Uh, I know that Smooth-On sells their own die, but it was like $15 for one color, and this entire set was like 13 bucks. For 15 colors. So I figured even if I only use like three different colors, totally worth it to get this. Um, the smooth on dyes say they should work for epoxy, urethane, rubber, silicone, um, and their liquids, liquid pigments as opposed to powder pigments, which are sometimes used for epoxy. So I figured some other epoxy specific liquid dye should be fine. Uh, obviously, if I were to mold some wheels for division, they will be this bright ass orange. For Draconid, I think I'm gonna go Blood Sport, Blood Red, though. Sorry, I just noticed and got a kick out of this. Uh, it literally says, please shake before use. So cute, love it. Okay, so I've got a scale here, so I can weigh the stuff, and you mix it by weight, not by volume, and I've got the speaker, which hopefully will hold plenty for two. I think I need about 80 milliliters of this stuff. This is a 100 milliliter beaker. So basically I just need to pour in about 50 of each, 40 of each, somewhere in there. Probably do slightly more just to be safe. Hopefully, I did not add too much dye to the point where it interferes with this thing curing at all. And I'll find out in 16 to 24 hours. Okay, so it's been about 12-ish hours since this stuff was cast at this point. Um, according to the label on the box, this stuff has a 30 minute 
pot life, which means it takes about 30 minutes for it to start to really harden. And then it cures fully in about 16 hours. Um, I was messing around with it before it completely hardened and the, about 30 minutes afterwards, I was able to like pull these like continuous strands. So it was no longer like a liquid, but it was still extremely gooey and wet to the touch and still coated my fingers. Now it's definitely basically rubber. Uh, I pulled this from the bottom of the little beaker stirring cup thing. Um, and it came out all in one piece, but when I grabbed it with pliers before they indented it, you can see. And now, if I were to do that, it would definitely not permanently dent it anymore. Okay, there's still a little mark, but it basically returns to its former shape. Um, but it's still not completely cured. So I'm not gonna pull the wheels out of the molds just yet. But you can see just how tough this stuff has gotten already. And it should only get a little tougher in the next four to eight hours before it becomes, you know, 16, 20, 24 hours. I'm trying basically as hard as I can to pull this apart. And this is only, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch thick. So that's pretty encouraging, even though I don't really like this color. Um, I talked to some guys on the Norwalk Havoc Discord, including um, Dominic from Team Already Broke, the guys who built Slapbox, and we're also driving Gemini at BattleBots. And he said that they use two to 3% by weight of dye to get their super brightly colored wheels and a similar casting process to what I'm doing. So I'm gonna try that for the next batch and see if I can get a more vibrant color. And I might try like a blue or orange. I decided I'm gonna try maybe doing a division molded wheel too. I probably wouldn't use this against another like vertical spinner or horizontal spinner, but I could probably use these against like a control bot where I need more pushing power and more traction. Um, so I have a wheel hub here. I just, obviously I haven't cast anything to it yet. I'm printing the molds now. As you can hear the printer in the background being super annoying, but this is what the gearbox looks like with the hub on it. And I think it looks pretty nice in carbon fiber nylon. Okay, it is currently 12.45 p.m. the next day, so it should be pretty much good to go. I have not tried to demold either of these yet, so we'll see. Whoops, that's stuck to the paper towel. See how this goes. Oh, there goes the mixing cup. So this is the one where I used mold release. See if I can't just like pull this out, that would be nice. Looks like probably not gonna happen. Oh, just kidding. Okay, so a little bit of uh, rubber did get underneath it, but not so much that it caused a huge problem or anything. I can probably just take that off with a razor blade. Didn't have to grip this so hard that I destroyed the really thin ledge or anything. It feels kind of slimy and wet. I feel like my fingers are getting a little wet, but I think that's just the mold release and not the actual rubber not being fully cured. You can also see the level of detail. It's gonna be hard to show up because it's like shiny on camera and it's white on white, but you can see that faceting transferred from the print to the wheel, but I'm sure that that'll be gone as soon as I were to drive on these for a little bit. Um, that mold release is really slippery stuff. Seems like a pretty stiff wheel. I can't just like pull this off. I'm trying reasonably hard to kind of pull it off the rim in both directions. And it doesn't want to go, which is good. So I think that's a success. This is with the mold release and no dye. Now let's see if the one that was dyed and also that uses Vaseline is any better. Oh man, this one's really stuck to the... Uh, See if I can't pop this one out just as easily. I don't want to pull too hard because I don't want to break the lip on the actual wheel. Yeah. All right, so I'll try my other idea, which was to press it out with some dowel pins. I think these are actually just pieces of four millimeter shafting that I cut. I don't want to push too hard. I don't want to break my mold either. Oh, you can hear it kind of giving, I think. 
Oh, there it is. Oh, this one's even cleaner. You even get any buildup really on the bottom except for right here. Still feels greasy, but I think, again, it's the Vaseline. This is very pink, unfortunately, not very red, but uh, yeah, so it came out well. Feels just as firm, I think. Actually, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's pretty much just as firm. Maybe it's, it feels slightly softer. Maybe the dye did interfere a little bit, but it could be the imagining things. I still can't like, like I'm trying pretty hard to peel it off. That's not going anywhere. So I guess I designed my hubs well. So yeah, I guess if you were gonna do this yourself, I would say Vaseline works just fine. Um, I think that you can kind of see on the surface of the wheel, it's not super, I mean, you can still see the faceting, um, but I feel like you can also see some streaks where the Vaseline built up though. And uh, I was especially afraid it would build up a lot around this corner, like this edge here. And it looks like it did kind of indent it in some places. So if you needed to reproduce a mold with like extra fine detail, then maybe this wouldn't be the best method. But I mean, for getting the thing out of the mold, it certainly works. And even around this rim inside here, I was able to pull this stuff out after it had cured for about an hour by just scraping it out using a, a toothpick. I just kind of went around the inside of here a few times and pulled that out. The white strand here was from the inside lip here where it was sprayed with mold release. That stuff I could peel out almost um, after like half an hour, almost immediately, like the whole strand just came out as one piece though. So this was, obviously it was much easier to remove than the one with the Vaseline, but because I forgot to put Vaseline in this groove, but I can do that for the next one. And I, this mold is clearly totally intact and perfectly reusable, so I can go ahead with uh, more hubs that I printed, which are even lighter than the last ones. I printed these with uh, three walls instead of with four walls and a lower infill. So these weigh, uh, in total, all four of them, I think would save about an ounce on the weight of the finished robot compared to uh, these two. These are really just test wheels, but I'll be able to use these as spares, I think. I mean, they both seem fine to me. I wish I had a hardness tester with me. Um, I can't tell if I'm imagining it or if this one actually is softer. I think they're, they're pretty similar though. So I had 16 grams left, which means it should have been pretty much exactly 80 grams in total, 40 in each wheel. So I expect this to be pretty close to 80 grams, 76. I expect this one to be pretty close to 80 grams as well. 76, wow, those are remarkably consistent given I just hand poured that, 76.3 and 76.01. All right, awesome. So these two wheels together would be 152.32 grams. Let me grab one of the existing wheels to compare the weight. So what I had been using before is a nylon Alloy 910 3D printed hub that's much lighter, much lower in fill and everything, but it's also larger. The only reason it has it's like that much lighter is because it's there's so much more surface area on each layer of this that it's mostly infill. Whereas this one with the top and bottom of the areas where the rubber wraps around, it's pretty much so, like all of these forky bits are so thin, they just ended up printing with no infill and they're like solid. So then this is one of the old hubs. It's 28.15 grams, 28.15 grams versus 31.15 grams. Um, so a little bit lighter. But then the tire is obviously way lighter because I just used these for tires. So I was only using 19 grams of tread before and those just stuck on here. So there's obviously several flaws with this. Number one is that the only thing keeping the tread turning with the wheel is friction and nylon's pretty slippery. So there wasn't a whole lot. I mean, there's a little tension on it obviously because I have it stretch over, but there's not a ton preventing the wheel from turning without the tread to begin with. But all up, 47.13 grams. With the next four wheels that I cast will be with these hubs, and they should be, you know, almost 10 grams lighter. So closer to, you know, 66 grams each, which 10 grams saved on four wheels would save about an ounce in total on a full set of wheels. And that should put me well within the weight limit with Draconid. All right, so just another look at these finished wheels here. We got the Vaseline molded and the mold release molded, or mold release, rather. I mean, both of them are obviously molded on the same exact rubber mix. This one just has 
10 drops of red dye added to it. So I'm probably gonna try and make another pair of wheels, but this time I actually, well I actually have four molds now, I just printed two more. So yeah, I mean this is pretty much a success, I think. I just need to clean the slippery stuff off the edges of these, and once I have a full set, I can drive the robot around on them and see if it's an improvement. Alrighty, it's been a little over 16 hours now and I'm ready to demold all the wheels. I also have these bits left from the bottom of the cup and the beaker respectively. Um, so I've got this nice bright orange which turned out really well for Division's wheels. And then this darker red which I accidentally made because I thought the red was a bit too light so I added some black to it and it just turned into this kind of like strawberry kind of color. It's not nearly as ugly as the pink, but certainly not like a Bloodsport vibrant red that I was kind of going for. But I still think for Draconid it's a reasonably well-fitting color. So I used the regular mold release on all of these. I'm gonna see if they'll just pop out. Ooh, that's um, looks like the rubber got really underneath the division wheels. So that's not great. So this is gonna be way heavier than the wheels I had been using with Division. Once again, you can see the faceting on the edges, but it's not nearly as pronounced on these as it was with the Draconid wheels because of the molds being a smaller diameter, probably about the same number of facets. This feels way softer and squishier than the other wheel. Maybe I just need to let it cure a bit longer. I think maybe I should leave it for more than just 16 hours. So I'm not gonna mess with this too much. I think it, either the dye is slowing down the cure or preventing it from getting as hard. All right, so it didn't exactly go as planned. These came out okay-ish. Pretty vibrant orange. This was a 2% by weight for the die, uh, but they're kind of soft and squishy, especially compared to the other wheels. Um, and also it seems like they peel off way too easily. Kind of see it peeling apart there. So I just cast some more, um, which is less vibrant orange because this is a 1% by weight die. I'm hoping these will turn out better. I also want to recast the uh, Draconid wheels because those came out even squishier because with those I added like 2% by weight in red and it didn't look red enough so I added a bit more red and then it still didn't look dark enough so I added a bit of black and then that kind of changed the color too. So I think I'm just going to give up on the red. I think light colors are just hard to get right. I don't really mind not having a very saturated orange but the not very saturated red just turned into like an ugly pink. So what I think I'm going to do is try and use this rose red which when not super saturated will either look like a nice purple color or maybe kind of red. So I guess we'll see. I think the color on these has turned out much better, but this is still just right after the pores are completed, so it hasn't cured at all yet, and it might change a little bit as it starts to cure, and the mix of the hardener and pigment, or the hardener and the resin turn from a more opaque white to a more translucent white. So hopefully the color will uh, darken up slightly, but 
It definitely might not show up this way on camera, but it doesn't look pink. It definitely looks more of like a deeper purpley color. So I like this a lot better than the light pink that I got before. All right, so it hasn't been the full 16 hours yet. It's only been about 10 hours, but this already looks way better than before. The last set that I did where I had like two or 3% by weight of dye versus this set where I have maybe a bit under 1% by weight. It's a world of difference. It seems like the color is still pretty vibrant. It's not pink, it's very purpley, and it's pretty stiff feeling, even though it's not fully cured yet. So it should only get better with a bit more time. It may not be easy to see on camera yet. I'm not putting like a super huge amount of pressure or something, but it's not puncturing at all, which is good. So just for comparison's sake, I grabbed one of these guys, which has about 2% by weight of dye. So if I push in here versus here, goes right through and gets stuck inside the wheel. So you can see clearly much less durable than it should be. All right, time for round three of wheel demolding. Uh, I managed to get some other rubber bits out of the beaker earlier. Um, you can see this stuff way tougher than what I got last time when I used way too much dye. So I actually measured out and weighed out about 1% by weight, maybe a little bit less than that for the purple, uh, for the dyes this time. So hopefully these will be way better than last time. And from uh, first feel here, it certainly seems like it. The pinkish color was actually very nice and hard. And then I tried to get it to be darker red and those I used way too much dye, like close to 3% by weight. And that seems to have made it very pliable and easy to tear. So much less hard as well than it should be. There we go. Okay, maybe it didn't demold quite as easily, but still pretty clean. Still feel some mold release on the outside, or especially on the bottom, less so on the outsides. Once again, have the wheel together, not really peeling away at all. This one's maybe slightly underfilled, but it still looks wide enough to get quite a bit of grip and very durable, but still with some good squish to it. There we go. That is all four. Four nice purple wheels. Ready to go on a robot. And then these two, ready to go on division in theory. You can see the nice draft angle there, the two degree draft angle, but I feel like that'll wear down within a couple minutes of driving. So it shouldn't be a huge problem. Awesome. Looking forward to trying these out. I wanted to make a quick comparison between the ones that I just demolded and the ones that I cast the day before where I used too much dye. So the color isn't quite as obviously different on camera. It is in real life a little bit clearer that this is a lighter orange, but it's not like night and day per se. I could easily mistake one for the other, but it's definitely a lighter color here. But the more saturated orange ones are just so much worse in terms of the durability of the rubber. If I squeeze these with similar force, I can squish, oh, 
softer one so much more. And then also like even just trying to tear it away from these spokes kind of, doesn't really go anywhere with the properly molded ones. But these, it peels right away and it starts to crumble and break apart. So these are definitely not suitable for combat. This one should be. That's all I have for you today. I'm sure I lost the vast majority of viewers by now, but if you're still watching, I'd love to hear what you have to say about this type of video in the comments. You can probably tell I'm still getting well acquainted with the new camera and what it can and can't do well. Hopefully the quality is an improvement over the GoPro or smartphone video I'd used in the past. If you liked this, hit like. If you want to see part two or any of my other videos, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching.